Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today it's gonna to be about takes and rendering. First, we're gonna look at takes and how to utilize them in one project file. You can have multiple different renders and then how to use render queue to render multiple projects while we sleep. So this is super useful and I used it uh, past month where I was working on a lot of client projects and multiple clients at the same time. And every night I was basically running my computer and rendering as much as I can because I needed to use my computer during the day. So I have only one machine and I had to utilize it. So this baby was running like the whole month. <laughs> but yeah, let's get into it. I have a lot of things coming up. I have a new texture pack coming up and I have a exciting video I don't want to talk about yet, but. Okay, so let's look at the takes first. Whenever a client asks me to you know, create variations or I want to showcase more angles, it's a good idea to create takes for each one. Next to your object manager, you can go to takes. You can see that I have created front take with the red cube. There's also animation to it. So it's like a slight kind of glide movement. And then there is a purple variation. And this is the same camera. So let's say client wanted, wanted to look at how it's going to look uh, when it's red and how it's going to look when it's purple. And I have also included the top take, which is red again, and then top take and the purple again. So takes are great because we can have more projects within one project, if I would say that. The way you set them up, I can delete this one and we're going to set them up. We have four different types of animation. I delete that and now Let's look at it. I have a cube red and cube purple. They're identical. I have also a camera top that has this animation kind of rotation. And then I have camera front, which has this kind of pan movement. We can start by going into takes and press this little plus icon. So this will create new take. We can name it. The camera we'll be using is the front one. We'll start with this one, front red. I can activate this take by just ticking it and then I select the camera. So I want a front, so come front. So you create your camera and then you select your render settings. So which gonna be the start setting. You can create any of yours. This is, this is my created settings. If you want a video on, on render settings in the project, cause I always work with the start and then I go to final render setting. Um, if you want a video on that, then just hit me in the comment down below. So we have a front red take created and the next thing, create another one. So I just press pl plus and I'll do front purple. I'm just gonna activate it again, do the render settings, uh, the starts I think. So now I have two takes, but nothing's changing. So the first I need to set up, if it's the front, so I'll highlight the front, front red take and go to the object manager. What I can do, actually I'll drag this in the bottom so we see both things at the same time. And so the front red, and I'm just gonna press this A, so auto take, and it will start recording the, the variations of different takes. So I say in the red one, I don't wanna see the purple one. So now this is my red take. I'll turn it off and switch it to purple, turn it on just for the you know clarity. And in the purple one, I don't want to see the red one. And now if I switch it off and go to front red, I am using only the red cube. And in the front purple, I'm just using only the purple cube. This is really good because this will um, allow you to, to have multiple variation in one project files, uh, one project file, and that is something very useful. Now let's do the same for the top. So I'll just create another take, top red, uh, activate it, select the top camera this time. So it switched to top cam, select the render setting and my starts thing. So we have selected the setting and now the animation goes like this. I want to see the red one, but there is also purple one. Just, I don't want any overlapping. So I'm just going to press a turn off the purple one. And then I'll create another take, call it top purple. Activate it, select the top cam. So as you can see, it's a front, front, and there is a top cam and top cam. And then the start setting again. So top purple, I'm just gonna activate the auto take. So this is gonna be recording whatever action uh, I have for this take. 
and I say I don't want to see the red one in this one and so I see only the purple one and turn off the auto take. It's always good to turn off the auto take because you will start then changing stuff, recording stuff and then it's get, it can get really messy quickly. So now I have four takes essentially. I have a front red, front purple, top red, top purple and I have all these takes and I want to render them and this is where we get into the rendering stage. So how do I render this correctly? Because all of those takes, they have a same output path. So if I go to output, they all go to EXR. Uh, we don't need multipaths for this one. They all go to EXR and they call project one. So as soon as you start rendering, you will start rendering it with this file output. But then once this second one start rendering, it has the same output path and that's where the variables come in place. So you can go into these variables and I never knew what it's for, but now it makes total sense. Uh, you can do current take name and this will create variable, which will basically use the name of your take and append it by the name of your EXR. So let's say you have project one and it will append top purple here. We can try that. And so this is really important. If you if you're rendering text from one project file with with one safe output, you need to you need to append this variable name. Now we've done that, I can go and I, I've never used this before. But since I've been working on these client projects, uh, I kind of start noticing, hey, there is multiple option actually. I was always rendered to picture viewer. That was my only thing, and. What we can do, we can do add to render queue. Add to render queue, uh, we can save it before we add it. And let's look at how it actually display for us. So it says the project one render in a queue, the take is top purple, camera is top, and the render setting is start. So everything we set here, it's gonna be reflected here and now I can click top red take and add to render queue. It will always ask you if you wanna save changes before project adding it. So now we have a top red, come top, and the same for the other ones, add to render queue and add to render queue. Now I have a four different renders, which I can then render in one go. But you can also, which is the best about render queue, uh, you can go to other project files and I have another, you know, client, let's say, ask me, you know, can you make it spinning? You make it spinning and then you just add it to render queue. Now I have the, there's no takes in this one. So it's, it only displays take main redshift camera that was highlighted and a start setting. Now I have five project files and, or five renders to go I can just press render here, start rendering, and it will start rendering for me. The best thing about this is that, you know, I can go sleep, wake up next morning and have five different renders. So you can see already it's rendering here, render three, same. It's, it's a little bit different look. You can always double click the picture here and you will see it like you normally do. So you can leave this running and it says in progress, and this will save your time tremendously. It's a very short video, but if you don't use takes or you don't use render queue, I highly recommend to start using it because this way you can wake up next day and, and have multiple renders waiting for you. Yep, see you in the next one, guys.